Afternoon everybody, Joe Conkley in the shop. Today we are continuing our series of, about guitar geometry and measurements. And we are going to take a look at a couple of guitars here and look at nut width and string spacing. These are two very important measurements that can give you an idea of how your hands might fit to the guitar neck and how, how they would uh, adapt. and. And uh, so you can uh, choose a guitar to better fit your needs. Um, there are a couple of uh, different terms that we should define here so that we can tell that we're comparing apples to apples uh, with, with the different guitars and that is one of the challenges with these uh, with nut width and string spacing at the bridge. Let's start with the nut width. Uh, most of the time when folks think of the width of the width of the nut. They're talking about this spacing right up here. This is the nut, and they're talking basically about how the neck will feel in the first position to your hand, how wide that neck is. Now, obviously, there are some other things like the thickness of the neck and the shape of that neck that will affect that. But the nut width is a nice, can be a nice straightforward number that will give you a general idea. Um, there are two standard nut widths for most steel string acoustic guitars, uh, one and 11 sixteenths of an inch and one and three quarters of an inch. Um, there's only a sixteenth of an inch difference between those two. Um, and to try to make things a little bit simpler, let's talk about, because my ruler that I'm going to be using to measure that nut width, it's uh, calibrated or in 30 seconds of an inch. So let's uh, take those two measurements and put them into 30 seconds of an inch. So one and 22 30 seconds is 11 sixteenths and one and 24 30 seconds is one and three quarters. So that's only two 30 seconds of an inch difference between there, a pretty small amount. And if you think about the width of the nut being the difference between the 22 30 seconds and 24 30 seconds is one 30 second of an inch on either side of the neck. So it makes it seem like an even smaller difference. But as you all know, it can make a pretty big difference in the feel of the neck. So first guitar we have here is a Waterloo, a WLX, WL-14X. So it is an X-braced Waterloo guitar made by Collings Guitars in, in, Aust in uh, Austin, Texas. A really great um, reissue of, a, uh, of an older guitar model. Um, so. For starters, I have uh, the Elderly Instruments website up here on my computer, and uh, there's our guitar right there, the Waterloo uh, uh, WL-14X, and let's look down here at the specs, and our specs come from the Collins Guitar Company, and this is, it says, a one and three quarter inch wide ebony nut. So. There are a couple of different ways you can measure the nut width. And um, usually what we do here at Elderly Instruments on our used instruments is we use a digital caliper, one of these tools here, so that we can take this tool, set it right up here against the nut at the end of the fingerboard and the front of the nut and measure that distance right there. Um, that's the way we do it. Now, that of course is going to introduce the uh, the digital measurement to this, but this is supposed to have a one and three quarter inch nut, which would be 1.75 inches with this. So I'm going to set my calipers right here on the edge of the neck, and I am right there on. You notice I'm doing it in this direction rather than in this direction because you can see my calipers this thinner portion right here at the end, that's really what I'm measuring off, is this edge right here rather than this front edge. So I'm setting that right up against the nut, and I can feel that register right on the end of the fretboard there, and the, and the nut. One inch, seven tenths, five one hundredths, one point seven five. So that is exactly one point seven five there. Let's compare that with a ruler that we can uh, use that is graduated in uh, 30 seconds of an inch. I'm going to use this 
uh, scale up here. One thing that I like to do when I'm measuring things with the ruler is, um, especially when we're talking about fairly precise measurements like this, a metal ruler like this, if it has some age to it, the end of that rule can get worn and change so that your zero point can be a little off. So a lot of times when I'm measuring this, I'm going to measure from the one, one inch on, uh, uh, line on out. So let's set that on here. I like this nice thin rule because I can take it and slide it right under the strings like that. So where do I start my zero point here? Do I, um, one way to do it would be to try to eyeball straight down here the outside edge of the neck and check that. But um, this is the point where we need to think about what point we're actually measuring here. When I think of the nut width, um, I think of this point right at the top of the fingerboard, right here, the right at the top of the fingerboard where the, f the fingerboard edge stops right here and the nut meets it, right there. Let's see, let me get the corner of this ruler. I'm talking about that point right there. So when I measure, when I use these calipers, my caliper is actually registering down here on the widest part of the neck. Therein lies the most challenging and difficult thing to understand when you're measuring nut widths. Um, are you trying to, so most necks are made where they curve up from the bottom and right, if this is the width of the fingerboard right here, you can see my hand has a real modified C there. The widest point of the neck right there at the fingerboard where the, where the nut meets is out here on my knuckles not up here right at the top point because most necks are have a very slight curve right in this point here so that the widest point of the neck a lot of times is right down here at the bottom of the fingerboard where the fingerboard and the neck meet right there somewhere just a little bit above that is usually the widest part of the neck because that fingerboard has a slight curve in let's see if we can see that on camera actually what I'm going to do, Juan, is set this ruler right up on that edge and see if you can look at it from this direction here and see if you can see that that ruler is setting on the widest part of the neck and there's a small amount of space and light right at the top of, that fret, of the fretboard between the ruler and the fretboard. So that the widest part of that neck is right in here somewhere right there as opposed to right up here so in my mind when I'm measuring with a ruler and I'm getting that point right at the top of the fretboard that measurement is going to be just a tad smaller than when I do the calipers on the outside widest part of the neck so one and three quarters of an inch is um, 1.75 inches and that's what I measured with the calipers now I'd expect when I set this ruler up there in the very top that I'm going to get something just a tad smaller than one and three quarters of an inch. How much is a tad? Well, let's do this. 32nd of an inch is 0 .031 inches. 64th of an inch, the next instrument smaller, is 0 .015. A lot of times that's what I find. The difference between measuring that very top point of the fretboard and the widest part of the neck is, you know, somewhere uh, 10 to 15 thousandths difference. So that top point of the fretboard is a little bit smaller than that widest part of the neck. So it really depends on how you measure it. How does the manufacturer measure it? It depends on how they did it. It also depends on how they carved that. It also depends on how easy it is to see that point. So as you can tell, it's a little bit difficult to get a super precise exact measurement for a, 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 a nut width and we're also talking about the difference between the nut width and the neck width at that point. So anyway, let's take a look at this. I'm going to slide my ruler in there. And um, when I put the one inch line right there at that top point, and I look over at one and three quarters over here, one and 24, 30 sec or that 24, 30 seconds, it's a little bit smaller, which, which in, um, is 
uh, correct as far as I'm concerned. So the manufacturer says it's a one and three quarter inch nut. When we measure the widest part of the neck, that's what it appears to be. When we measure that top point of the fretboard, right there where it meets the nut, it's a just you know ten to fifteen thousand smaller than that. So any way you shake it, I believe this is a one and three quarter inch nut. So when I use that um, term one and three quarters of that measurement, that registers in my mind as a slightly wider neck than a standard and when I grab the guitar and feel it, that's what it feels like to me. When I uh, start playing some chords in between there and the spacing of the strings in between my fingers, it feels just a little bit wider so I can get something, get my fingers in there to grab the strings and, and have, uh, you know, a number of my standard chords. It falls under my fingers and feels really proper. Okay, so there's one guitar. Let's try another. Another fine guitar by the Collins Company. This is a Collins OM2H. So the designation is OM. The first thing that OM means to me is a triple O size body with a long scale neck and a one and three quarter inch wide nut as opposed to a one and 11 sixteenths. Let's see what we got here. Let's do first with our calipers. I'm going to find that point right there at the end of the fingerboard and the beginning of the nut there. See what I've got. 1.75. There's the 1, there's the 0.7, there's the 5 one hundred. 1.75. And I pulled that one up too here on my computer. Callings OM2H has a one and three quarter inch wide bone nut. All right. Let's stick our ruler up here and see what we can get. Slide it under the strings. One of the nice things about this guitar is that the bone nut is made super precisely and so is the edge of the fingerboard here where that's a very um, precise plane here on or, or facet on each, on each end of the nut there. And I can see the, the, the corner is not um, super sharp to the touch, but I can see it really well. I can see exactly where that is supposed to be. And when I look at that, that looks like one and three quarters to me. Boom. There we go. So there's one where I'm getting the same measurement. Let's take a look at the profile of the edge of the fingerboard here, if we can, and see where that widest part of the neck is. We can see that. A little hard to see there. Let me see if I can see it myself. When I look at that, which is a little difficult to see, yeah, it's the same curve that I'm talking about there. Where that widest part of the neck is right down here, you know, about a third of the way up the, the fingerboard width, right there. And it curves in just a little bit at the top. In any case, talking about that sort of look right there where here's the top of the fingerboard and here's the widest part of the neck and my knuckles and that's at the near the bottom edge of the fretboard. That little discrepancy there. All right, so there's a, a colleague's guitar. Let's see. I got one more guitar to look at. The Santa Cruz guitar. Wanted to grab a guitar that was a smaller neck. This is a Santa Cruz um, F style guitar model. Yeah, just a Santa Cruz F. Mm -hmm. Our stock number is SCF, Santa Cruz F model guitar. Let's pull that one up on the computer. With that nut, 1 and 11 sixteenths from Santa Cruz. All right, so let's do this. Let's get our calipers here. All right. The measurement there is 1, 7, uh, 1, 4. So 1.714. 
supposed to be a uh, manufacturer tells us it's 1 and 11 16 1 and 11 16 is 1.6875 and so here we have that um, situation where we have just that we're measuring with our calipers we're measuring the Raul, widest part of the nut wait, wait, please, Raul, wait, the manufacturer wait. I believe is measuring this point right here where the nut and the fingerboard meet right there where I have my my ruler that edge right there and because we have that slight curve to the fingerboard the widest part of the nut is a little bit the widest part of the neck at the nut is a little bit wider than the nut width itself let's throw our ruler on here and see what we get See, I want to get one and 22 here. There we go. When I look at that, that looks like one and 22 to me. But the the facet of the nut, the side of the nut, things are just a little softer here on this Santa Cruz guitar. Not quite as the facets don't have as sharp a corners that they did on that calling. So it's a little harder for me to see when I'm measuring with the ruler here. Where do I place the ruler? Right there. Right there. Just those little differences. In where I place that ruler, I can get a slightly different reading. But in my mind, this still looks like 1 and 11 sixteenths. So it, uh, 1 and 11 sixteenths is 0. 0.6875, and we got 71. So let's just go, uh, let's just round it up. 1.69, and we got 1.71. So that is a difference of, point of two thousandths of an inch, a thousandths of an inch on either side of the nut. So in my mind, this is a 1 and 11 sixteenth nut width, but the neck is just um, two thousandths of an inch wider because of that curve right at the nut. So um, we like to, on our used instruments to use the calipers for that reading because we can take this tool, place it in that same place on the neck and get a very precise reading and we put and that's the information we impart to you as a, as a buyer. But beware that that can be slightly different than the manufacturer's um, spec at that same point so and that's the reason why it's because that slight curve in the neck so uh, as a buyer you have to um, just be aware of all those little things going on so you can get a good idea of what this instrument is and how that's going to fit in your hands all right so let's look at the other end of the guitar here the other end of the guitar the standard measurement to see, so you, you have your nut width and then as the strings go down, both the strings as they go down the neck and the neck itself get wider as you get closer to the body. There's, there, it's a little narrow here at the, at the nut and they widen out as they get down here. The standard measurement down here, I like to do the same thing. Now, um, as far as using uh, eliminating any wear that there might be on the zero point of this ruler. Um, this is a slightly thinner ruler and it fits real nice underneath the strings. This is my go-to standard ruler which I tried to keep. It's a little thicker, a little sturdier, and I do everything I can to keep this edge from wearing so that when I make other measurements I have a precise zero point. And if it, as it gets a little older I move on to a different ruler. I get a new one so that this remains very precise. But again, the string spacing, we're talking about this distance right here. But when we measure that distance right there, we have to take into consideration the thickness of each string. One way you could do it is to take your calipers and measure from the outside of one E string to the outside of the other. Um, that would be one way to measure. Let's look here and see. Okay, so um, this is the Santa Cruz guitar here, and they have a different measurement to judge how wide the neck is when it gets out there. Um, like I said, in my mind, the two standard measurements would be the nut width and the um, string spacing at the bridge. The, normal way that I would measure that string spacing is to take a ruler and measure from the center of the one E string to the center of the other. 
and um, it's a bit, you know, it it's an approximation because you have to be able to see precisely. And as you can see, for me to see precisely, I got to look over the top of my glasses and practically get my nose in the sound hole here. But when I do that, to measure from the center of the one E string to the center of the other, that to me measures two and um and um mm -hmm. so the low E string is um the inner part of the E string low E string is two and five thirty seconds and the outer part is two and six so it's pretty much right there at two point five and a half or two and five thirty seconds plus another half a thirty seconds would be a sixty fourth which would be what two and eleven sixty fourths but um, so again, you can see how do you measure that and how do you um, communicate that it is uh, it can be there's always a, a, a small factor where you have to consider for how the other person how that person measures and what device they're measuring and what the manufacturer is doing. So to me, I would measure that if someone if you called up today and said. I want to buy this guitar, but I want to know what the, str what the string spacing is in, at, the, at the bridges. I would call it two and six thirty seconds, which would be two and three sixteenths to reduce the fraction down. That's what I would do. So when I measure the string spacing at the bridge, I measure from the center of the out the center point of the outside two strings. As we mentioned, Santa Cruz does this, which I don't see as often, but it is very helpful. The width of the neck at the 14th fret. There's the 14th fret, the body joint. They say 2 and 3 sixteenths is the width of the neck at the body joint. If I use my calipers here and measure that precisely, I get 2.21 inches, which is pretty close to 3, three sixteenths is what? Um, what is 3 sixteenths? Let's find out with our calculator here. 0.1875. So again, we have that same phenomenon that we have at the top. I'm measuring the widest part of the neck there, and the neck does a little bit of curve there into that top point of the fingerboard. So if I slide my ruler on here and eyeball the top point of the fingerboard to the top point of the fingerboard, it is, yeah two and three sixteenths but the widest but the neck is just a tad wider right there so same phenomenon there but anyhow so one and eleven sixteenths nut um, and two and three sixteenths at the um, nut space let's try the Waterloo one and three quarter inch nut Two and three eighths of an inch string spacing. So this guitar, compared to the uh, Santa Cruz, has both a wider string spacing at the at the uh, at the bridge and the one and three quarter inch nut. Let's see here. I can move these guitars around. Without... Let's check out. Callings OM2H. One and three quarters nut. This is exactly the same as that Santa Cruz, where it is, um, I would call it two and three sixteenths, but in actuality, the, the high, the upside of the high E is really closer to that measurement. But in any case, I hope this clears things up rather than muddies things more because I know I've presented a number of different things here. But the main point I'm trying to make is when you measure the nut width, you have to consider the shape of the neck, that slight curve of the shape of the neck, and whether you're measuring this point at the very top, top of the fingerboard or this point, the widest point of the neck. Most manufacturers are measuring this point. A lot of retailers like us are measuring this widest point of the neck, something that can be a little more precise and easier to measure. As you can see, when I'm using that ruler and eyeballing that point, it's a little harder to tell. 
it's a little um, more straightforward number when I put those calipers right on that outside of the neck. All right, that's all we have for you here today. I hope that was helpful and informative. If you have any questions, please send them in and we will try to answer. And uh, that's all we got in the shop today, and we'll see you next week. Remember to like us and share us on Facebook.